Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox. I'm coming to you today with a review for Power Season 3, Episode 9. I will say at the beginning of this video that I'm sick of this show. I'm so irritated with all of the damn characters. It's like, I, I wanted to turn that shit off last week. I was just like, what? Everybody is on my fucking nerves, and I think I just want the show to be done. I think we didn't we didn't been through so many fucking twists and turns. I can't take it no more. Maybe we need a little break so that we can come back refreshed and be ready for this shit. Because I'm just like, it's just entirely too much. It's weird. I still like the show. But it's um, hard to review when everybody is on your fucking nerves. But we're going we gonna to get through it, y'all. We're going to get through it slow motion today for sure if you guys follow me on snapchat y'all know i was drinking last night i don't normally drink on sunday nights but i was feeling good watching the emmys and um i'm not hung over i'm just you know bitch old so you know it take a little time to recover and get back on track i have missed a damn meeting this morning i was supposed to be at a 10 o'clock i told my supervisor i was like oh my god like 11 30 i realized that i missed a meeting but there's another one at three that i've got to go to so with that all being said, we're going to get through this fucking review, recap, whatever you want to call it, fast. I'm going to try to get this done in less than 20 minutes. we going to, y'all stretch out the hands of prayer, hope that I can make it through this. But yeah, I'm, let's get to it, shall we? All right, you guys, the show opens with Ghost and Tommy. Every time you think that the two are not going to tell each other what's up, you know, they go on and tell each other. Tommy goes on and tells Ghost that he was at Milan's warehouse because Ghost was looking at him like, damn, nigga, you just not going to tell me nothing. You know, he feels like he can't trust him. But Tommy tells him he was there. Ghost was like, really? Oh, what was it like in there? He's like, just a regular warehouse. We get a little flash of when he was there. Milan tells the group of guys that, you know, Tommy is one of them now. Now, they ain't really too accepting of that. And I don't believe it either, you know, but for whatever reason, Tommy believes that Milan has accepted him into the fold, even though he's threatened to kill him a few times, you know, I'm just like, Tommy, oh, he's annoying number one. Anyway, Tommy asks him about Angela. Is she still keeping her mouth shut? Yeah, Go says she is. Angela, on the other hand, is at her office and she's got that phone that ghost gave her okay she sends a text message to it and um, of course we know that it goes to big boss Mike Mike looks at the text and tries to call the phone <laughs> okay when he calls Angie answers the phone and she doesn't say anything and he doesn't say anything I was cracking up while they're both on the phone there is a helicopter that is passing by and I'm assuming both of them can hear it on the phone at least it seems like big boss Mike realizes that whoever might be calling them or whoever's answering on the other line is in the same building and as far as crazy obsessed ex Greg Knox uh, he goes out to Tommy's with his homeboy what was the, what's the guy's name you guys I don't remember his name okay but they go out to Tommy his mother's house and uh, this is the second annoyance okay but of course this is the mom's you know the mom's personality is kind of she kind of ding dingy and dense and you know so I was annoyed that you know while they're at the house and the guy is questioning the mother where was Tommy you know this night she's like oh yeah he was here I have a receipt you know we used his credit card to charge a pizza but while he's asking her all these questions, Crazy Obsessed is going through the house. Like, bitch, if you're going to be at my house, I'm keeping a keen eye on both of you motherfuckers. Like, why is he able to just wander through there? What the fuck is wrong with the mom? But I have to admit that the mom has always been that kind of way, okay? So, I mean, it, it is, you know, it makes sense that she's like that, but it's still, guy, that was annoyance number two. Now, next we got Keisha. She missing, okay? The girl calls uh, Tasha and was just like, she didn't show up to open up. I ain't going in there. I can't cover. You know, where is she? Tasha says she's going to find her. You know, now Tasha's a little alarmed. Like, I ain't talked to the bitch in a while either, ever since I gave her them 500 racks. So, you know, Tasha's a little concerned. She texts her, Keisha, girl, where are you? Just checking on you. Then we get the next annoyance. What am I up to? Annoyance number what? Annoyance number three. Let me keep track of this shit. Okay. Andre goes up to Tariq. Where were you? You know, I was hanging with Kanan. Okay, we just went to the old neighborhood. and I... Listen, I know you got general fucking sense. You cannot be this sheltered that you just automatically take to somebody who clearly is on the dark side. Even if you don't have no streets. I mean, you can tell that Kanan is not the best person, you know. So Andre is like concerned. Like, I'm not going to cover you for you no more. And the tree whole thing is like, don't worry about it. It's all good. I'm just, you know, that's. That's the next fucking annoyance. K Tariq is getting on my goddamn nerves. I know he a child and all of that, but I'm just, 
I'm having a hard time believing that he would flip this fast, this easily. I know he's frustrated with ghosts and everything, but now back at the office, dedicated committee member, you know, he sees Angie and uh, he tells Angie, look, we found out that there was a prison system check on Lobos' whereabouts and that somebody did it after we already said that the man was dead, okay? So whoever did that was trying to get the 411 on Lobos and had to know that he was still alive, okay? So now Angie is just like, shit, more trouble for her. Now jumping back over to Tommy, okay? He's meeting with Ruiz and Ruiz is giving him the money so that he can get these damn drugs out. Tommy realizes that Ruiz hasn't given him all of the fucking money, okay? And Ruiz is like, like I told you guys before, I am not paying full price on merchandise when I don't have it. I'm sorry. Do whatever you gotta do. Because Tommy was just like, you want me to go back and tell him this? He said, do what you gotta do. So at this moment, I was just like, ooh, Ruiz is kind of putting his foot down. We already know that Milan is crazy, but of course there's a plan in action. So Ruiz texts Ghost and he says, you know what? It's all done. Okay, when are you gonna do what you need to do? So yeah, these two have a plan, right? While he's reading this text message from Ruiz, <laughs> Angie walks up um, and she's pissed, okay? Who did you tell about Lobos, okay? Whoever did the damn prison search is the one who was going to tie it back to me because whoever you had do the search, they're gonna connect that person to Tommy and then Tommy gonna connect to you and then you gonna connect to me and then I'm gonna be in fucking trouble. Ghost is like, don't worry about it. That's not gonna happen because they can't just speak, you know, legally. And that's when she realizes that it was proctored. Um, ghost lawyer. Angie is so fucking annoyed with ghosts because she was just like, they don't need proof. They need them a story. This is, I'm a lawyer. I know how this shit works. You can build a story to put somebody, you know, incriminate them. And it's even easier when you really are the guilty ones. <laughs> but you know, ghost, he says, don't worry about it. It's all of the control. So that's annoyance number four. She tells him, look, I just need you to clear all this shit up. Okay. So I can be done with you and I can move on with my life. Okay. Me and my new fuck buddy, you know, crazy obsessed ex <laughs> you know she just she's fed up with ghosts and we still see that crazy obsessed ex is um using angie so i mean you know good for him because i'm tired of angie and you know even though he is crazy obsessed ex <laughs> he's smooth with it okay he keeping up with this charade you know get you some and find out some information at the same time <laughs> to throw her off he tells her that you know the case is pretty much over that he did go to tommy mama house but you know she stood firm and oh i forgot to tell you guys that while angie was talking to ghosts he told her that crazy obsessed ex had gone over to the mama's house and that she didn't never you know she didn't shake the alibi then and that's when Angie realized, like, oh, he ain't even on the damn case. Why is he doing all of this? Okay, so that's when she went back and talked to him. And I guess he had an idea that she might already know. So he just went on and told her. So that would kind of ease her. You know, she was all uh, rubbing on the back of his head. Like, my man ain't lying to me like that motherfucker goes. <laughs> I was just like, girl, he's somebody that told you wrong. And to prove that while she's asleep, he goes and gets the burner phone out of her um, purse and copies the SIM card number on there. And uh, we already know that he's about to do a search on this phone. He don't know that Angie's trying to get the damn information on that same SIM card as well. You know, she's got somebody looking looking into the SIM card and they find out that it was the, the burner was bought by a credit card. And it was a prepaid card, so no name tied to it, but she's still trying to find out the location. Same pretty much for Greg. Now, back to Tommy, okay? I still, I cannot really figure out the angles of nobody because nobody trusts anybody right now. So it's just like, you can't really tell. Like, I can't tell if Angie is really falling for Greg or if she's just trying to, you know, I don't know what's going on there. And then as far as Tommy, I'm just like, how can you be so stupid to think that, you know, Milan just is going to accept you that easily? Okay, but, you know, he's talking to Milan, and Milan is telling him how, you know, Ghost had followed him to the warehouse the day before, and um, Tommy was just like, oh, he's just trying to figure out what I'm doing, you know, it ain't got nothing to do with you. Milan's like, listen, okay, I'm trying to accept you into the fold, you know, you got all this potential in you, but you know what, Ghost is holding you down, and I already told your ass, if Ghost is going to be a problem, I'm going to kill your motherfucking ass, kill him, I'm going to just kill everybody and let that be that. So now Tommy is mad he confronts ghost okay and he is just like you know i found out that you was 
following me. And Ghost is, couldn't really explain that he wasn't following Tommy. He really was following the other guy about the damn cigarettes. But you know, Ghost ain't told Tommy about that plan because he ain't really sure if Tommy gonna fuck it up or not. So he can't really say nothing. But Tommy's whole thing is, listen, I told you he gonna kill me if you keep up with this shit, okay? Now, I didn't chose you over Holly. You need to choose me over any fucking body else, especially Angie, okay? So he all up in Ghost's face. That right there to let you know their um, positions as Ghost was always here and Tommy was there, um, at least as far as Tommy is concerned, they here and he might even be up here at this point. Ghost was just backs off and was just like, okay, I'm sorry, you know, I'm going I'm to I'm straighten up and fly right. And then they agree that Ruiz is not going to act right until, you know, maybe he's his mind is easy and he has a meeting with Milan, okay? So he tells Tommy, you know what, you set that up, I'm gonna let you head that whole thing, all right? And uh, Tommy says, okay. So Ghost texts Ruiz back and says, okay, it's all set up, you just go on and make that call. We still don't really know what that means. The next annoyance is the fucking boogeyman that is Kanan, okay? He just been kind of lurking around. I guess they're not going to make the seasons too much with Kanan and Milan, so they just kind of have him in the background. I think he probably is going to be a bigger story next season, obviously, because we at the end now. But, you know, Andre meets with Kanan, and, you know, he's telling them about the pills, and Kanan's like, I don't give a fuck about that. Andre was like, so what's this whole thing with you and Tariq? And Kanan was like, don't worry about it. I mean, I ain't going to do nothing to the little nigga. If I was going to kill him, I'd have done it by now. Andre is all kind of like, you know, he know this shit ain't cool. And Kano was like, oh, you want to go tell Ghost? Well, let me let you know this. Ghost will never forgive you for letting me be around his son. Okay, you ain't even told him I'm alive. Okay, so he not going to accept you like that. I was just like, if, if anything, the only way for Andre to get saved is for him to go and tell Ghost right now what's going on. Okay, he really should have told him already. I see that he's trying to protect his family, his kid and all that, because Kanan definitely is crazy enough to kill him. But some tell Tells me that Andre riding this fence, even though I believe his loyalty is to Ghost and that he's more just afraid of Kanan, um, it's gonna get him killed. Andre ain't gonna last too much longer, y'all. Now Ruiz meets with um, Crazy Obsessed X, and of course he only has one thing in his sights, which is you know getting Tommy and Ghost. Okay, Ghost in particular. Ruiz is telling him that he's got this meeting set up with Milan, and you know, and and, and uh, Crazy Obsessed X was just like, well, is Ghost gonna be there? And he was just like. Oh, I mean, maybe, maybe not, okay? And um, he was just like, okay, well, look at here. I got this button. This is high grade, you know, extra secretive, you know, hideaway shit. You put this on your collar and you sew it in there, all right? And I'll be able to record and listen to what's going on where you are. Um, and nobody is going to be able to see it, even if they do a, you know, trace, you know, they won't be able to find it, all right? So hide that on your person and, you know, you'll be fine, okay? If they don't say ghost name, you need to imply him some kind of way, add him to the um, conversation if he's not there. Ruiz was like, I'll see what I got, I can do. Now let's change gears. It's career day at the kids' school. And ghost. Who just, I'm just like, this is the next annoyance. Am I up to annoyance number four and number five? How the fuck you is this big of a drug lord that's mixed up in all this fucking trouble? And you gonna be this damn club owner that goes and talks at the kids? Like, you should be trying to have the lowest fucking profile. But see, that lets you know how arrogant Ghost is. All this you got going on, why are you trying to have this whole anyway, y'all? They had the damn career day, and uh, his kids are two totally polar opposites of how they feel about their dad. You can still see Ghost's reflection in his daughter's eyes. She loves her dad. You know, he says that he's the club owner, and, you know, he's telling them all about that. Kids don't care about what happened. You know, they want to know if the celebrities there, you know, Beyonce, Fetty Wap. You know, Ghost being smooth the way he is, he was like, yeah, but the whole idea is to make everybody feel like a celebrity, you know, make them feel important. Okay, Tariq is sitting back there like... <laughs> he got whatever nigga just written all over his face. And then Ghost, you know, he kind of realizes in that moment that while he's been this club owner and chasing his dreams, that his family has been sacrificed, you know, and that he is sorry for that. And, you know, he's kind of just reflecting and feeling bad, you know, how everything has gotten fucked up since he's tried to do this. And he's just thankful that they've had, they've been supportive of him. Okay, so, you know, Tasha back there, you know, she getting some kind of in her feelings about what he says. And he getting in his feelings too, child. Right when Ghost is leaving the damn career day, that's when uh, Ruiz calls him and was like, you're right, Crazy Obsessed X is definitely off the rails. He's running his own investigation. And uh, Ghost was like, okay, perfect. You going to that meeting with Milan okay don't mention my name 
you cannot get my name or Tommy's name anywhere involved in this whole thing. Okay, so uh, Rui says that's fine. Now, Andre, his nerves real bad. Okay, he don't really know what to do with this whole Kana situation. He finds Tommy and he tells Tommy like, look, um, there's some shit going on with Tariq. You know, maybe you should check up on him. And, you know, Tommy's just like, I don't need you to tell me nothing about my damn family. You're not part of this family. And Andre is like, listen, I'm not trying to step on anybody's toes. I'm just trying to help you. I'm just trying to help Ghost. I'm the reason why you still living. I told Ghost that they was about to kill your ass. That should let you know that I'm not really trying to bump you off. Tommy's still in this whole, you know, thanks but no thanks. He still don't really see it for Andre. Back to Crazy Obsessed X. He and his boy, you know, the one that's doing the stuff for him on the, on the slide, they talking, and he gets a text message from the person that he's doing, the, you know, the search on that SIM card. He gets a text message that says that they got the, the burner phone call log. So now, you know, Crazy Obsessed X, he getting, he getting all excited. I was just like, oh, look, he almost out of breath. He can't even talk. The guy that's doing the little background research for him is starting to get annoyed with this whole thing. You know, he's been ready to just kind of say, I'm done. But, you know, Crazy Obsessed was just like, no, 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 no. We like right on the brink. He asked the guy, what's the number of the burner phone? Okay, so he gives him the number and it comes to find out that it's on the call log. Then when they try to find out where the phone was purchased, I got confused on this part because they were trying to figure out an address and I guess they were trying to figure out the address of where the phone was was registered to, like where the person lived. Like I was confused on that part. But I, it kind of started to make sense at the end, but I still, I'm not making the connection. So maybe you guys can correct me on that part. But anyway, they get the address and this number and they tie all that shit together while they talking. And like I tell you, that, that nigga, that crazy obsessed ex is, so, he is almost orgasmic. I was like, this poor thing gonna kill itself trying to get this shit solved. Did I tell you guys that Cantos has showed up at um, Ghost Club and he's all, you know, smirking like I'd like the guest list, the VIP guest list for this grand opening thing we having with Karen, ba uh, 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 what's her name, Karen Bassett. Ghost was like, why would I give you that? And he was like, because I got a whole bunch of information on you and I could tell, but I didn't. Okay, but I can. Okay, you need to remember remember that part. That's he didn't say that, but that was definitely implied. Ghost was like, okay. So we see a scene when um, you know, the club, the, the the other people's club is jumping and Ghost has his people over there selling these these pills, okay, and they just got drugs going all through the club. Then when we see um the cl the club is gonna have this grand opening night, I guess, with Karen Bassett and you know, she's meeting with the owners to that club. Ghost shows up and he was just like, as promised, I'm delivering the the uh, the VIP guest list to Cantos. Where is he? He's about to give it to him. Then the police bust in. Okay, this is the DEA. You know, we got you know it's drugs going through this club. All this in front of Karen Bassett, who remember her and her dad was trying to stay away from this type of element. Okay, they're like, ain't no drugs in here. They was like, yeah, we heard it was. You know, so they look around and this shit stashed away and you know all bags and all of that. So they was just like, you under arrest. I was just like, that was real simple too. Like, I was annoyed that that shit happened that fast and nobody was seeing the link that, you know, Ghost was there and all of a sudden, I mean, maybe the club owners did because they did say, you know, that this ain't over. But I was just like, this is just, I, that, I mean, as intricate as the plots always are on this show, that's how you guys gonna get the bus going. But I guess they was like, shit, we got so much other shit going. We just gonna hurry up and get, let them get busted. So after they dragged the owners off, you know, then Ghost was like, oh, you know, Karen, look at that. You're dealing with them, but you can come on back to my club. You know, it's, we can still get this popping, basically. You know, and Karen is like, oh, maybe I will, you know. So, whatever, child. Cantos, you know, when he comes up, he's like, what happened here? And Ghost was like, you, you know, your boys with drugs and all that. But here go the list. Okay, we're not going to have no more problems, are we? And Cantos says no. But something tells me that Cantos is still not too far from the rock that he crawled out from under. Now, this big meeting with Ruiz and Milan, okay, it's tense. They already search Ruiz and his boy when they first get there. And then when they about to meet with Milan, you know, they trying to search him again. And, you know, they like, fuck, we already got searched. I ain't, we ain't doing this shit no more. So then it's looking real, you know. Tommy's like, I'm telling you, I trust him like he's my own. You know, he's good. 
Milan was like, you go on and search them. And then if motherfucker got something, we gonna kill all y'all. So he's searching them and then he stops because something is in, is in his jacket right here, you know, and then he feels inside his pocket and there's some cigars. Okay, he's like, oh, some Milan, you know, I can't come out, you know, without giving gifts. So uh, that part was cool, right? Okay, Tommy was just like, I'm not gonna be here, Ruiz. And Milan sit down. They got business to discuss, right? Okay, so remember that there. During this scene, we see Tasha. She's at home. She's having some wine. I said, girl, that alcohol will fuck up your judgment. She still can't find her girl Keisha. She's getting concerned like something has happened, you know, and she just, her life, you know, she always gets very reflectionary. Is that a word? <laughs> but, you know, she just gets in this mold when she's at home by herself at night with her wine. So, ghost comes. Tasha is good news. Oh, I got this shit rolling back with Karen Bassett. You know, we about to make this money and the kids and you gonna have legitimate money for the rest of y'all lives. It's all good. She was just like, congratulations. Congratulations. You always said that you wanted to do it and you did it. Okay. She said I was wrong. Now that was like the best scene to me because we've all been saying how Tasha, he told her from the beginning he wanted to go legit. He wanted to do this club thing and she just made him feel like he would never be nothing more than like a, this major key dough boy you know so she was just like you ain't gonna be able to do that and you know he did it so she was like I was wrong I was like I was glad she did that because that was the only thing that was holding me back and making me feel like oh Tasha okay like you just never believed in your man okay so that was cool so now everybody is a little bit more vulnerable you know she was like did you really mean what you said at the career day okay and he said yes definitely I felt that way you know no matter what happens I'm always gonna take care of you guys you guys are my family she says thank you for protecting us he says he's always gonna protect them okay so that's very you know I, I love that about ghost too i mean he is loyal to his family even though it's some bullshit going on right then you know it's it's about to get it's about to get fucked up because you know they getting close and she's like okay I, I better go you better go you know she gets up and then he like jumps up and is like wait a minute and then he kisses her and i was like girl that's it you fixing to give up the draws cuz <laughs> Charlotte, they got in that bed. And I guess, you know, for all that it's worth, it's good to see the couple back together. I mean, they are married. But um, that sex scene, I mean, for as much, I mean, it was very passionate. But then it was also, you know, crazy. And I was just like, what the fuck is going on with everybody's face? Like, I, <laughs> I mean, are you supposed to have, like, surprise? Like, kind of like, yo, it was just sort of like, I was like, this ain't sexy at all. As a matter of fact, as the girlfriend's to have a stroke, she was making these faces and he was, I was just like, no, this is not how I pictured the sex scene between Tasha and Ghost, you know, we knew it was coming eventually, but this was so not it. They have this sex. Once it's done, you know, post-coital, laying in the bed, whatnot, you know, reality starts to hit. He gets a text message and Tasha's like, who is that? You know, thinking that it was Angie. And uh, he was just like, no, you know, I got some shit going on right now, but we about to be good. You know, I got a plan. Okay. And she was just like, you got a plan? And he was like, yep, got a plan to get that in Milan. You know, and she was just like, oh, don't worry about it, Tasha. I got it. Okay. She was like, you know, maybe you should leave. He was just like, well, we just did it. And she was like, yeah, but you know, the kids, like, did they come in here and see us in the bed together? They're going to be confused. And I mean, we're not together, are we? I was kind of mad that she said, are we? Because it was like, you kind of leaving it in his hands again. And just like, oh, Tasha. I mean, I can understand you guys. I mean, even as frustrated as we get, you be so in love. Like, you just want shit to get back on track. But, you know, you ain't really thinking about all the shit that's happened, all the water under the bridge. So, I mean, I guess that part is realistic. But that was the next annoyance. Because I was just like, oh. I know Tasha, she just wants her man back, okay? She just wants her family, her man, her whole status. She wants all of that back. But when he tells her that she's got a plan, he's got this plan, you know, now that has thrown her off because she just wants them to lay low on Milan. I'm at 35 fucking minutes, child. I'm gonna have to edit this shit down. So once he finally leaves, she calls Tommy and she was just like, you know, Ghost was just here, and he told me he got this plan, you know, with Ruiz, you know, and she already don't feel like she can trust Ruiz, and uh, so she tells Tommy, you need to stop it, you know, or else Ghost is gonna get us all fucking killed, okay, so again, Tommy is pissed, okay, because Ghost ain't told him all of this, so he tells her that don't worry about it, I'ma handle it, so then this is the real major irritation, right, <laughs> 
So the meeting, when the meeting is over, you know, Ruiz and Milan come out, you know, they all laugh and had a good time. You know, you can tell that they didn't rub shoulders and then everybody is feeling good. You know, Tommy was just like, I sent your boy home. I'm going to take you on home. Tommy got this look on his face. He disgusted. And, 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 and uh, Ruiz is just happy. You could tell he got the information that he needed, that Ghost and Tommy's name was never said in this fucking meeting. You know, he keeps on tapping at his button right here. So you know that the shit was recording it. Y'all, this is, I'm telling you, this is the major irritation. So they get in the car, you know, and Tommy is pissed, okay? He's seething, you can tell. He's talking about, Ruiz, to ask him, Ruiz, you know, has he ever had, you know, a traitor? And you know how you trust somebody and they turn their back on you and they do this and they do that, you know. And Ruiz was just like, I know, I know what you mean, but you know, it's been a long day. You know, maybe we could just chill out. You know, Tommy even says his name and ghost. We know that button is still recording everything. You know, Ruiz was just like, okay, X nay on the octay. I'm trying to like, you know, but Tommy doesn't really know what's going on, but he's just pissed. You already know that he's about to kill Ruiz. Okay, he acts like his car overheats. He pulls over to the side of some dark street and um, he tinkers under the hood and he tells Ruiz to bring him his flashlight. You know, Ruiz opens up his glove compartment and the flashlight is in there as, long, as well as Tommy's gun. So that kind of relaxes Ruiz because he's like, okay, his gun is in there. He's not about to kill me. So he goes and takes the flashlight to Tommy and then Tommy shanks him. I mean, just kills him, stabs him, stabs him, stabs him, you guys. And I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> Why are you, are you doing that? What the fuck is... Even if you thought that Ruiz and Ghost had a damn plan, wouldn't you be more upset with Ghost when Ghost knows that you've already told Ghost that the motherfucker was going to kill you? Why would you kill Ruiz and not think it through like Tommy? Oh, he is so fucking stupid. Oh, my God. I was so just blown. I was just like, oh, I'm so annoyed. Andre comes from the dark somewhere um, because Andre's got to take him, take him away from the scene. So they hide the body, I guess, and they leave or something. Did he leave his car there or did he drive away? Oh, that would be stupid if he left his car there. So I don't remember exactly what happened there, but because I was just so pissed, you guys. And then the next annoyance was we go back to see Tariq. Him and damn Kanan is, you know, walking the streets again. They go into the store, and Kanan is telling him basically to steal these fucking $250 um, Jordans. Just so you would, you know, people would know that you were bossing. Like, why is your child this manipulative, manipulatable? Okay, is that the word manipulatable? <laughs> it's just like, my son, you are not going to be able to tell my son this, and he just be like, okay. And my son is... 17 but even when he was 15 fucking years old you cannot make my son steal some fucking shoes from the store so i'm just like i'm just sitting there like what the fuck i mean i guess it's kids like that but if you shelter your child this much you definitely did them a disservice okay them motherfuckers is gonna be stupid when they grow up so that's the next annoyance we have to annoyance like seven or something right now jump back to crazy obsessed ex he's got that address that he got from his boy. He's at that address, which is um, um, Hugo's. Oh, I told you, I forgot, I forgot an important part. Dedicated committee member goes to Big Boss Mike and tells him, like, look, we got an autopsy report on old boy. And at this time, Big Boss Mike didn't even know that the man was dead. Now, he know he didn't got these calls and text messages and whatnot. And, you know, now he really stressed out because he's like, somebody else got that fucking phone. Dedicated committee member tells him that they're going to do a search and find out where, you know, the person lives that had this phone. Big Boss Mike was like, no, don't worry about it. I'll do the search. You're going home. You've been working hard, okay? The extra dedicated committee member. So we know that Big Boss Mike probably gets the address then, okay? So back to crazy obsessed ex-agent Craig Knox. He's at this location of this address. Wait, we don't even know this yet. Okay, I'm jumping ahead of myself. We see Big Boss Mike going into this um, to this location. It's an apartment. I'm assuming it's Hugo's apartment, okay? He's dressed in dark, so you know he, you know, he on the low-key, you know, sneak around, kind of, you know, extra, you know, spy shit. So he's going through the house. He's looking through anything, I guess, to, that could connect him to this person, and he goes through some 
the drawers and he sees a picture of him and some Spanish looking woman. So now it's just like, okay, now they're going to see that that's the girl. Is that the lady that they were saying that's set up somewhere, you know, living real high on the hog and, you know, they trying to figure out who's paying her shit. I was like, is that the woman? And is, is Big Boss Mike that person that's doing that? I didn't even make that connection, but he steals the picture. So I was just like, oh, like what's going on here? So anyway. While he's sneaking out, that's when we see Crazy Obsessed X out there in his car. He sees Big Boss Mike coming out, okay? He's looking like, what the fuck, okay? Like, and then, so then I was just like, uh-oh. Is Crazy Obsessed X really going to fall for Angie? Because now he's going to think that he's been putting his focus and his sights on the wrong person and thinking that Angie is the one that's doing everything when really it's Big Boss Mike. What he don't know is this both of them. And then lastly, you guys, we see Tommy. He goes back to the club, you know, to meet with Ghost. Ghost like, what you doing here? Tommy's like, I told your motherfucking ass to stop it. That Milan was going to kill me. You just going to keep on doing shit, huh? Well, I got one for you. I killed Ruiz. You know, Ghost is looking like, why did you do that? Why don't you see that Milan is a fucking psychopath and he will kill you and me? He don't care about us. Tommy's stupid ass is one-dimensional, dense, only sees what's in front of him, just like for all the street smarts that he has. What the fuck is wrong with him? And I guess I can understand Tommy is so pissed at Ghost that he's not thinking clearly, but when the fuck does Tommy think clearly? You know, Ghost was just like, he is still not one of us. We not gonna never be one of them. I told you that I had a plan to get out. I want out of this fucking game, and I'm never going to stop trying. So you killed Ruiz? Fine. I'm gonna come up with another plan. I'm out this shit. I tried to set it up so that you could be fine with what you do, and I could go legitimate with my clubs and everything, you know, so... I don't know what else to tell you. I'm always going to be trying to get out of this. That part made me really like Ghost again because with all of the bullshit that's happened, Ghost is just, he's just trying to be right. He's just trying to do right. He's just trying to get out of it, even though he is really going about it in a like unrealistic way. Like it just made you, you have to appreciate and admire somebody that's trying to do right. And the shit is just, it's fucked up. It's just fucked up. But I was just like, okay. So it's like weird because the, the show was making me feel differently about a whole bunch of people he just wants Tommy to give him some time to come up with another plan and Tommy was like you know what no we tried your way that shit don't work no more okay let me I'm gonna make I'm gonna come up with the plan I was just like <laughs> that is gonna be the most fucked up ass plan you know and Ghost because he sees that Tommy is just really at that limit you know Ghost again he backs off and was like fine Tommy you whatever you do okay um, and then that's when we see Tommy go back to Milan and say, you know what, I am one of you and to prove to that to you, you know, we got to kill Ghost, okay? And so that's how it ends. And I'm not really sure again if that's how Tommy really feels or if this is part of his plan now. You know, so I was just like, y'all, this show, that shit had me so, I was just like, oh, I am so fucking annoyed. Like, I'm just, I'm just, this is, oh. So, yeah, y'all, just um, glad next week is the damn season finale. All right, you guys, let me get off of here. I didn't use up my entire lunch. I got to give me something to eat and take it on back to work. Make sure you guys rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is For It's Rocks. And everything else I do will be in the bottom box. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. I plan on doing the same. Till next time, rock stars. Bye.